I'm going to show you the quickest, easiest and cheapest way to test spark plugs using a multimeter. Um, the better the quality of the multimeter, the more accurate it will be uh, for the larger measurement. So you can use a, a cheaper one, but this only goes up to um, 20 mega ohms. Uh, so I'm actually going to be using this one, which goes up to 60 mega ohms, and it just gives a slightly more conclusive answer on one of the tests in particular. So we'll crack on with the tests. So the first test will be to test the conductivity on the live side to make sure that's within spec. So one multimeter lead will go in, touch the top of the spark plug, and the other will be on the electrode. So just on that tiny bit, just there. Okay, and this is a resistor type spark plug. You can normally tell resistor spark plugs because they have an R in the uh, part number. Um, but most car spark plugs will be resistor type. And on, on those, we're looking for a figure of between three and a half to 5,000 ohms. Okay, so, so I'll get that lined up just down there. Like I say, just very carefully, one on one tip, one on the other, and there we go, 4,560 ohms. So that's between three and a half and 5,000, so that's absolutely great. Um, now, if it was a, say it was on for uh, a no resistor spark plug, say if it was off a chainsaw or, you know, a little two-stroke engine, whatever, then you're looking for a figure of zero between those two points and you would basically tap your leads together. So you've got 0 0.1 in the leads, 0 0.2, and you'd be looking for a figure of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 between those two points if it was a no resistor spark plug. Now, the 3,500 to 5,000 is on car spark plugs or automotive spark plugs, but some spark plugs like this one, this one's off a chainsaw, and it is a, but it's actually a resistor spark plug. Um, uh, see the R in the title there. And on this particular one, the, uh, the figure is around about 8,000, if I remember right. Let's just see if I can, uh, let's just zoom in on the multimeter display what was it there yeah so it's um eight eight point five seven kilo ohms so yeah it's um eight thousand five hundred and seventy so the three and a half to five thousand is a general figure on car spark plugs on resistor types but do check the spec of your particular spark plug and you can look up part numbers online pretty easily now and find the spec sheets for them so that's the conductivity on the live side sorted. So what I want to do now is test the conductivity on the ground side. And that's just to make sure on the ground side is basically all of the metal body of the spark plug just here. So it's the, um, so it's the nut, the body, all the threaded part all the way down to the spark plug tip just there. And uh, because it's one, basically one piece of, of metal, you're looking for a very, very low figure. If you start getting a, uh, when I say a low figure, you know, less than one ohm, ideally very close to zero once you've taken off the resistance in the leads. Because if you start getting bigger figures, what it means is the insulation is degrading underneath and uh, rather than the current just passing between the two quickest points, it's got escape routes. So it's just another check on the insulation um, just by checking on how the current conducts on the ground side so so you see there we're getting 0 0.1 there and all you do is you just you just test different parts of the ground side you can do it right on the um on the electrode tip not the electrode tip the the spark plug tip you know the curved part and uh, and yeah and just work your way around the ground side just checking lots of different places each time you check in though, just 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 make sure you get in those nice low figures um, once everything's sorted there. And then the final test is to test the insulation. And the idea of the insulation is to keep the live side and the ground side completely separate. So if you like, the insulation shepherds the it shepherds the current from there. All the way through the body of the spark plug so the current can only come out on the electrode tip 
Now, if the insulation is um, defective, what happens is the current can escape. Um, and so it can register in the body of the spark plug on the, on the threaded part. And if you imagine the current, all it's wanting to do is, is get to ground like a bolt of lightning wanting to get to earth. All it wants to do is get to ground and it'll do it in the easiest way possible. So, you, so the insulation is there to make sure that all the current only comes out there. And then when the current makes the leap to ground, it has to do, it has to jump this gap here. And this is earthed to the engine block. And so that's when you get your spark when it makes the leap from the live side to the ground side. So if it's got escape routes on the body, the current will just go to the body of the spark plug instead. And you'll either get a weak spark or no spark or intermittent spark. And then obviously all your running problems and misfires and what have you. So all I'm going to do is just put one multimeter lead on the live side and just check various parts of the ground side with the other lead. And because this goes up to 60 mega ohms, it's a, a huge figure that we're looking for. We're basically looking for no electrical connection between the live side and the ground side. And that's why a, a multimeter which goes up as high as possible is uh, just makes this more conclusive. So one on, the, one on the live side, one on the ground side, and we're looking for no reading. and keep it on the live side and just keep checking lots of different parts of the ground side. Turn the spark plug around and you're looking for that zero reading all the time. Well it's not a zero reading, it's an overload reading, it's a huge reading that you're looking for. So all of these will be are, are over 60 mega ohms and that's exactly what we're looking for just there. So that's absolutely fine there. Now, experts will say, well, <coughs> these can't be accurate tests with a multimeter because the multimeter is a low current device uh, testing a high current component. And th my response to that is, well, first of all, it's never let me down this test. But the, the best thing for you to do, to be absolutely sure, is to subject the, you know, if obviously the reason you're testing a spark plug in the first place is because you've got a running issue. So test them as soon as they come out of the engine, okay? So if after they've been subjected to, to heat and electrical load, um, that's when you test them. And, and a defective spark plug will then start giving out of spec figures because the the heat and the electrical load has has highlighted a weakness in its design whereas a perfectly good spark plug will give you all of those in spec figures that I've gone through regardless of whether it's cold or whether it's just been just come out of a hot engine all the figures will be in spec on a good spark plug uh, regardless and that's why this test is reliable even though you're only using a multimeter to do it and the final test, or it could even be the first test on a spark plug because it's um, it's so important to the spark plug's operation, is a gap test. This particular chainsaw spark plug has a, um, has a specified gap of 0.5 millimetres. So I've got my 0.5 millimetres feeler gauge just here. And, uh, and you just basically just make sure it goes in nicely into the gap there. You can probably hear it catching. Yep, so there's no rattling up or down and it goes into the gap quite nicely so that's okay. If it didn't go in the gap at all the gap would be too small. If, it's, if the feeler gauge is able to rattle around up and down then the gap's too large and you just get your spark plug regapped or you replace the spark plug dependent on um, if, if regapping is possible. So all of those cheap quick basic tests to help you weed out the bad spark plugs and I hope you find that useful and thanks very much for watching.